Out of the Park Baseball presents a lot of information across many different screens, so let's make it a little easier to navigate, shall we? Welcome to the Baseball Dreamland channel. In this video, I'll show you how bookmarks, notes, and different screen setup can help you digest information more quickly with fewer clicks. While you're welcome to mimic my setup, my real intent here is to empower you to implement your own preferences. Finally, I'll show you how to carry over your customizations across different versions of the game, especially as we approach OOTP 26. Let's start with the manager office. I use this screen as a base of operations during the season, but the default layout doesn't tell me enough. I can change that though. The first move is to alter the grid with three rows instead of two and six columns instead of four. Now I have 18 grid spaces instead of eight. In addition to changing tiles, you can resize them to your preferences. Bear in mind the interface can get confused when increasing the size of tiles. I found the cleanest method is to go left to right and top to bottom. When finished, my manager's office looks like this. In addition to the default information, I can now see my roster, some basic stats, transactions, and budget space. While simming games, I can stay on this screen without feeling like I'm missing something. Notice on the right, I include the notes tile, so let's talk about notes. These help me properly manage my save settings, ensure I'm screen grabbing the right content for my other videos, and stay on top of semi-regular tasks. I can't overstate how simple of a feature this is, yet it's super valuable. My off-season checklist keeps my custom universe in proper order, my monthly checklist works in a similar fashion, but has more to do with me being the general manager in my saves. And then I have notes tied to many of my players with shop results. I do recommend shopping everyone on your 40-man roster during the winter meetings and as the trade deadline approaches. Taking note of interesting players is of particular importance for me, as I play with the hardest trade settings, so good deals don't come around all that often. Nice thing about player notes is they link to the player page for easy navigation. When identifying players of interest, I also shortlist them. Some players keep multiple shortlists, though I only use the default one for two reasons. First, their news appears in my inbox when it otherwise wouldn't, and second, it's an easy way for me to keep their scouting reports up to date. I've got a custom view set up so I can see the specific information I want about these players. It's one of my six custom views that apply to different screens across the interface. For example, here's what I like to see on my pitching menu so that I can make more decisions without clicking onto individual player pages. Again, what you're looking at here should just serve as a template. There's so much to choose from when editing the columns. Just choose the ones that help you make decisions more quickly and easily, or just pick the ones that are most interesting to you and the player pages are still there if you need them for more information. Just to provide some more ideas, here is my setup of the lineup screen and my staff search screen. Back to my reference to player pages. These also allow you to customize the columns that appear. This is also recommended so that you can do more on the main profile page with fewer clicks into the stats pages. The setup here is done in the hitting stats or pitching stats tab in this example. Just make sure when creating your custom stat row, you move it to the top so that it appears as the format of the main profile page. Circling back to the manager office settings, you can do the same thing on the team home screen with my setup shown here. You can also do it on the finance screen as this example shows. And finally, you can customize the organization screen. Unfortunately, you can't customize the size of each tile on the finances or the organization screens. I wish that were possible because I'd love to make my active roster tile a one by two, but I can't complain too much. By making some of these key screens more valuable, you'll spend more time on fewer pages, which makes the bookmark feature valuable. A quick keyboard shortcut set at the top left can help you jump straight to those preferred pages without a bunch of clicks. It took me a bit to get used to it, but I love the feature. Finally, you might be thinking, this is all great, but I don't want to spend the time doing this when I have to repeat it as soon as OOTP 26 comes out. Well, you won't. I recently learned that you can easily transfer these screen settings between game instances. The first step is to copy and paste all the files from the OOTP 25 folder called Tables into the corresponding folder of your new OOTP version. Second, there's a user.dat file in a hidden config folder. Navigate to it by going to File, Settings, Troubleshooting, then click the button that says Open Folder Containing File App CFG 
and engine CFG that will open a folder that looks like this. You want the file called user.dat and follow the same path into OOTP26 to open the same folder for the new game. Copy that file over and presto, you've carried over all the customizations we've covered in this video. So I hope you take a little time to decide your preferences and take a little time to apply them. I promise you it will be well worth it. Please give this video a like if you found it helpful and comment below if you think there's any additional tricks or preferences that you think others should know about. Subscribe to the channel if you want to be notified of new videos and I'll see you for the next one.